Hmm, so what am I going to do for training today? This looks like a good and hard exercise. Yeah, I take that. During my years as a coach and also before as a professional player, I did tons of mistakes in terms of training, but um, even if some of these mistakes maybe not have such a huge impact, some of them can really and dramatically decrease the effectiveness of your training and really harm your progress in your sport. I come from the sport of badminton and I will also show some um, exercises from my sport, but you will easily see that you can transfer all these mistakes to, I guess, almost any other sport like football, basketball, soccer, volleyball, you name it. So I hope this video will help you to avoid these five mistakes and increase the quality of your training. Probably the question I get asked most often, especially by newer coaches is, can you show us a few good exercises? We need more exercises for our training. But I can understand that you want to see some exercises, but I have to say this is the totally wrong approach to training if you just want to put exercises together. There are tons of different definitions of training itself, but I will assure you that you will always find something like this, that uh, training is always aiming for a goal or is a structured process. So the first thing you need when you go into training is a clear sense of why. So if you are a coach or if you are a player who has to make his own practice, always think of what you want to accomplish today, where in which area do you want to get better. And this is the why of your training. And it is so important to have this one coming first. The how depends a lot on the circumstances in your training. So how big is your group or how experienced is your group? How old are they? Um, what experience they already did with certain topics? And then it's quite easy with the next step to choose exercises. So the exercise actually comes really in the end and doesn't matter so much. I also have to say when I get asked the question, what is a good exercise? There is no good exercise. Every exercise can be good or bad, always depending on the goal you have. So if it triggers the goal you want to achieve, it is a good exercise. If it's not bringing you towards that goal at all, then it is a bad exercise, but it can be the same exercise at the same time. So always get a clear sense of why and a goal before you go into training or before you start planning exercises and putting exercises together. Many players and coaches have that misconception that a hard training automatically is also a good training. But here's the thing, everybody can make a training really hard. Just choose really hard exercises, make them as long as you can, and in the end you will be able to even kill the fittest athlete in your group. So it is very easy to make it hard, but once again we have to think about what is our goal. I don't want to say that training doesn't have to be hard. Of course it has to be, especially if you want to train on your fitness and endurance, for example. You only get better there when you really push yourself in terms of yeah, endurance, heart rate and so on. But especially in complex sports, the physical thing is not everything in training. You also need technical and tactical skills. And that means if you train those skills, maybe the session will not be that hard physically, but a lot more mentally. So training is also a lot about being smart in what you're doing. Once again, always having your goal and your why in mind. There is a saying, train smart, not hard. And I really have to disagree with that saying, because if you want to improve, you have to train hard. You need to put in work, you need to put in a lot of physical exercises as well in almost any sport. But as I said, try also to be smart. So I would rephrase it to train smart and hard. A lot of exercises and trainings I've seen or I also have been part of happen in a very fixed environment. So by that I mean very standardized exercises. For example, someone's throwing shuttles to you and you're practicing a certain technique. You want to get a lot of repetition and want to perfectionate your movement or you're playing the same pattern over and over again to get a certain rhythm for your footwork, for example. Training like that can be enough if you're playing a sport like, I don't know, golf or maybe cycling, swimming where you have to reproduce the same exact movement as consistent as possible over a certain period of time and you almost have the same conditions all the time. But if you're in an open and complex sport, just like badminton for example here, you have so many different situations. Actually, every situation is different from each other. The shuttle comes in a little bit different trajectory when you play a match with a little bit different speed. You're coming from a different position. So you have to also think about how can you train to be ready for these millions and millions of different situations. The answer to it is quite logical in my eyes. Try to create a lot of different situations in your training. For example, if you train technical skills, you don't want the shuttle always to come from the same direction. If you're throwing, then always reposition yourself or use a flying shuttle so you variate a lot. 
Also think outside the box, for example here you can see he has to start from a push-up position lying on the floor and then going to the rear court and hit a smash. This may not look that game realistic but actually when you dive for a shuttle for example you have to get up afterwards and then go to a certain corner so um, try to variate a lot, use different coordinative exercises as well and don't work in a fixed environment in your training. Pretty sure you also had the experience of a training session where you had a technical or tactical exercise in the end, but you couldn't keep focus at all. The quality of training went down and down and yeah, you were really frustrated afterwards. The question here is how do I structure my training that things like that doesn't happen during my sessions. And I think a good thing to remember is the head always gets tired before the legs. So that means in the beginning of the training, choose more things that focus on coordinative, technical and cognitive skills. And in the end, you can go more for physical skills like strength training, endurance things. And that usually is a good structure. One more important thing, if you want to improve your speed and explosiveness, you should also put that more in the beginning of the training. Because in the end, you will also see that your muscle fibers will get slower. And if you're not training at your maximum speed, you will not improve in that area. So start out with coordinative things, speed exercises and technical and tactical training. And then in the end, you can also still finish with an endurance exercise, for example, where you don't need so much focus and don't need so much thinking. Now just imagine two different players for a second and both players start at the same time but the first one gets a lot faster progress in the beginning in terms of results he's very successful on tournaments he beats the other player easily and maybe gets also selected to some different teams and yeah but after a while player two catches up overtakes and is really successful in the long run and in the end player number one has no more chance against him this is a common scenario if you look at beginners and kids training and I want to ask you what kind of player do you want to be or what kind of players do you want to have in your training. It is very tempting to aim for the quick success and if we for example take kids when they play against each other it's usually always the bigger and stronger one winning. Maybe also the kid with the coach who's saying always play the shuttle to the backhand corner of the other one. So giving these easy strategies and working on physical abilities will help you in the beginning. But I can promise you if you are in a complex sport like badminton you will have no success in the long run with that approach because you need a lot of different technical skills especially and a lot of coordinative skills and they can be a lot better trained when you are younger. Science and research also showed there is something like a golden learning age for technical and coordinative skills like this table shows here. So before you hit puberty, you have a huge potential to improve in those areas. Afterwards, it gets a lot more difficult, especially in terms of coordinative skills. With strength, it's exactly the other way around. So here you can see that you can improve a lot more after puberty. Physical abilities will come with the age. Also, when you grow up, you will see that smaller kids, they catch up automatically when they just grow a little bit and they have a natural disadvantage sometimes when they are younger. But if they have really good technical skills, you will see that it's almost like they go onto the fast lane at a certain point and will overtake all the bigger and physical stronger kids um, very, very quickly. So as I already said before, in an open and complex sport, a big range of skills is super important. And you or your players will also develop that big range of skills if you're doing a lot of different sports. There was a super interesting research by US scientists about the soccer teams of Germany and France who won the last two World Cups in soccer. And they found out that almost all of the players played a lot of different sports when they were younger. They were not specializing on soccer only. They were getting so many different experiences, so doing so many different sports and it didn't harm their results in the long run, as you can probably imagine if they become the world champion eventually. So if you're coaching or working with kids, I can just recommend you to help them get as many different skills, technical skills, coordinative skills as possible, and also encourage them to try out other sports it will definitely help them in the long run to get successful and get a good athlete. So maybe you realize that you were doing some of these things in your training and maybe see them in a little bit different light now. It is totally okay to make mistakes. I think even it is super important to make mistakes as a player and as a coach if you want to develop. But I think these five things especially are important to avoid um, in the long run if you want to be successful and if you want to yeah, really get the most out of your training. As usual, thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to hit the like button if you enjoyed this video and also subscribe to my channel. 
See you next time. Bye-bye.